Let's take the derivative of the inverse sine function. And just notationally, it's written two different ways. One is arc sine, and the other is this sine to the negative 1 of x. They both are the inverse sine function. They're just, it's just different notation. And I wanted to mention that, that I don't like this notation. It shows up on calculators and things. But it almost looks like it's telling you to do you know, a negative exponent. But it's not telling you that, so I think it's confusing. So I, I don't really use that. All right, so let's take this derivative here. So arc sine of x is, let's, let's do something and create a placeholder. Let's say it's equal to y. And now I know that if, if that's true, then, then this next equation must be true, that the sine of y is equal to x. Because this is the inverse sine function, I, I know that if one of these equations is true, the other has to be true. And now this is easier to take the derivative of. A lot easier. So let's do that. So this is just going to be a chain rule. The derivative of the sine function is cosine function. Repeat the inside. Times by the derivative of the inside. And that's just dy dx. And this is equal to the derivative of x, which is just 1. And now dy dx, that's the derivative. That's what we're after. So let's try and solve for that. So we're going to get dy dx is equal to 1 over the cosine of y. And y is equal to arc sine of x. So this is 1 over the cosine of the arc sine of x. Well, you know, that's, that's fine, but that's really messy. That's really messy. Wouldn't it be a lot nicer if we could get this cosine of y to be a sine of y? Because then we'd have the sine of the arc sine of x, and that will simplify very, very nicely. So what I'm going to do is just use our Pythagorean identity. Sine squared of y plus cosine squared of y equals 1. And now I can solve for cosine by subtracting sine and taking the square root. So this is cosine of y is equal to plus or minus plus or minus the square root of 1 minus sine squared y. So I just subtracted sine over and then took the square root of both sides. Okay, so now we have an expression for cos of y. We can make a substitution here and, we'll, and then we'll end up with something with sine of y. That's exactly what we wanted to do. And I am going to take only the positive square root and I'll tell you why I'm only taking the positive square root after we, we go through these calculations. I don't want it to throw you off and sidetrack you right now. Okay, so this is 1 over the square root of 1 minus sine squared y. And now I'm going to rewrite this as 1 over the square root of 1 minus sine of y squared. So just a reminder, sine squared y is actually an abbreviation for this. So this, uh, this expression on the left-hand side is an abbreviation for this. This is really what we do when we write sine squared y. This is what we mean, what's on the right. So I'm just rewriting it to be more clear because I think that will help once we make our substitution. So let's do that now. Let's make our substitution. So oops, that's maybe a little too close. Okay. So we have... 1 over the square root of 1 minus, and then this is the sine of y, but y is the arc sine of x. So the sine of arc sine of x. Uh, and then this is all squared. And the sine of the arc sine, those two cancel out, so we just are going to be left with x. So this turns out to be 1 over the square root of 1 minus and all of this simplifies on the inside to just be x, and you square it, so it's 1 minus x squared. And that's our derivative. That's the final answer. So this is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus x squared.
Okay, so the only thing we have left to do is, is to explain why did we only take the positive square root. Everything else, all we did was we used this identity here to substitute cosine of y, and we took an implicit derivative. So far, so, so good. So why do we only take the positive square root? Well, let's come down here and, and look at, at something here. This is the, the graph, or it's, it's supposed to be, it's a sketch of the graph, of the arc sine of x. So we can see that, that, the, that arc sine of x equals y. Well, y, the biggest y could ever be, or in other words, the highest the function ever goes is pi over 2, and the lowest is negative pi over 2. So we know the range of this function. So negative pi over 2 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to pi over 2. So y is somewhere in, in, in between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Well, if we look over here at this circle, we can see that that's the, this region, right? Y is an angle. Y is an angle, and, and so we're, we know that what we're doing is we're... Oops, sorry about that. We're doing something like this, right? The, the, y is some angle in here. The cosine of any angle in, in, in the first or the second region, quadrant, is always positive, right? The cosine of, of, of in this quadrant is positive. The cosine in this quadrant is always positive. And because, because it's the cosine of y, so we're taking the cosine of y, and we know that y is in here or in here, well, then the cosine of y is always positive. And so that is our justification. For this step, the cosine of y is always positive, so we only need the positive square root. Okay, so now we've tied up all our loose ends. Well, hopefully we've justified every step that we've taken and, and found the derivative. Okay, you can use this exact same process to take the derivative of all the other inverse trig functions, but I'll do uh, one or two more with you just to get you started. Okay, see you in the next video.